Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week, we will be talking about the Mars FPGA project, updates to the Nintendo 64 core, the Splatterhouse core, and more. So let's get to it. Randy Snice released a new wallpaper for the Mr. FPGA. This one is a high resolution image with a box art for the Super Nintendo version of Street Fighter 2. If you're interested in watching how it was made, Randy created a time-lapse video of the entire process. To download this wallpaper and other high quality wallpapers by Rani, you can enable them in the update all script settings. Anton Gale has gone through the code for the Exerion core and added a cocktail cabinet mode and also recoded a lot of the core. I don't think these updates are officially available yet, but it's always good to see older cores getting fixes and new features. The Mars FPGA project has announced some of the members of the team. The first member to be announced is Wizzo. Wizzo is a person that brought us a lot of useful scripts for the Mr. FPGA, and he is now working on the Mars FPGA graphical user interface. The interface looks really cool and very inviting for casual users. I know there are those who prefer a simpler GUI, and luckily the Mars FPGA will have an option to use a simple GUI. Another member of the team is Fixel. Fixel is the creator of the FreeDO 3DO emulator and also the DCX Dreamcast emulator. Cores for those two systems are also in development for Mars FPGA, thanks to Fixel. Fixel also said that once Dreamcast is done, Naomi support will be worked on. Tog, the founder of the RetroFog store, is also part of the Mars FPGA team. Using his experience from designing accessories for retro and modern hardware, Todd designed a console-like case for the Mars FPGA. The case gives me a little bit of a PlayStation vibe with that big circular power button. At least I believe it's a power button. We also got a confirmation of another core that's coming to Mars FPGA. This one is for the IGS Poly Game Master arcade hardware from the late 90s and early 2000s that runs many beat-em-ups, shooters, fighters, and more. There was also a confirmation on pricing and some of what's going to be included. The Mars FPGA will cost $699 and it will come with an injected molded case as well as JAMA connectors, analog display out, and it will do 4K 60 digital output, all out of the box. This sounds expensive, but considering a fully assembled Mr. Kick can cost over $500, $700 for the Mars FPGA does not sound bad for a more powerful system. Wizzo showed off a prototype NFC board from RetroCastle. This board is much smaller than the ones you can get off Amazon and AliExpress, so it will give you a lot more flexibility on where you can integrate an NFC reader to. I'm personally using an NFC reader inside a Genesis replica case made for a Raspberry Pi. I did have to cut some of the internals of the case and open up the NFC reader I bought from Amazon in order to make it fit in the case. Anti-aliasing and dedithering have been implemented on the Nintendo 64 core. Anti-aliasing will smooth out the edges of polygons and dedithering will smooth out the dithering present in some cases. The post by Robert shows us how different the image can look when these features are enabled. Divot was also added to the core. This mostly fixes up artifacts that are caused from anti-aliasing. And thanks to fixes, even more games are working. Otego mentions that the Namco System 1 core should get Splatterhouse up and running really soon. All the circuitry is hooked up and the four CPUs boot up and execute code. However, the core locks up at the moment and needs more debugging. Mr. Addon's Reflex RF adapter is now available for sale. This will allow you to connect a composite output to a television that only has an RF input. You can pair this adapter with the composite slash S video adapters designed by Mike Simone, which are also available at Mr. Addons. Lemonsan has posted that release candidate one of the Nemesis Arcade Core is now available. Updates include corrected audio and the latest Mr. Framework was implemented. Since it's not a stable release, you will have to enable unofficial cores and update all to obtain this core. The next batch of Mr. Addon's Reflex Adapt adapter, that's a mouthful, is scheduled for November. Work is being done to add X input, switch, and PS3 compatibility. 
the average N64 latency for this adapter was also decreased to 1.05 milliseconds, and the adapter will also be available in multiple colors. So what is the Reflex adapter? It's a device that will allow you to connect original controllers over USB with very minimal latency. There's support for pretty much any classic console controller. The product page has a full list of supported controllers. You're not going to get zero latency with this adapter, but the latency will be so low that you won't even notice it from zero because you're still going to be getting less than a frame of lag. However, light guns will be an issue. Most will not work, but the only one that will work is the GunCon 1 over USB. Head over to the product page to sign up and be notified to when the adapter goes on sale. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro related content. And if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.